In today's video, we're looking at the best settings that I use for Magic Lantern RAW on the Canon EOS M original camera. I'm going to touch base a little on the 1080p and the 5K FRTP mode for newcomers, but my main focus is the high resolution modes like 2.5K and 2.8K. These are the modes that I mostly shoot with and I know that a lot of people have been struggling with these modes, so I hope to provide some more clarity and just get you some more insight into how to shoot with these modes uh, when you're out in the field, so yeah, we'll take a look at that. The Canon EOS M was never designed to be a cinema camera. Most of us have just taken this camera to new heights, especially from the developer's end. When you install Magic Lantern RAW and shoot RAW video up to 14-bit RAW, the quality of this is absolutely insane and that's why I've been shooting this for a few years now and I love the look that I get out of this camera. Now the way that I've set mine up allows me to feel more comfortable when I'm shooting out in the field. I bought this new budget XLR mixer to allow me to take more control of the audio without relying too heavily on the camera's preamps. The mixer is powered by the camera and provides no phantom support, so your microphone will have to have a battery input, otherwise you're not going to get any phantom power out of this mixer. Now the beauty about the EOS M is that it's mirrorless and you can adapt it to a range of different lenses out there. Good lens choices for the Canon EOS M in my opinion are wide or zoom lenses with stabilization like the Canon EFM 11-22, the 15-45 to kit lens, Sigma or Tamron 17-50 to OS, and the Canon 10 to 18 mil or the 18 to 135, which have beautiful stabilization, beautiful colors, sharpness, everything. Those lenses are really good for the price. Nice walk around prime lenses include the 7 Artisans 25 mil f1.8 or the 12 mil. Also the new TT Artisans 17 mil f1.4, the Miki 35 mil, or even some budget C mount lenses that you can use with the crop modes. Recently, I've just finished building a set of EFM lenses for the Canon EOS M. These are compact and stabilized, except for the 22mm of course, so I hope to test these out and share my thoughts with you guys in the coming weeks. Now just to mention that if you are using some menu lenses on the Canon EOS M, make sure you go into the menu, custom functions, and enable release without shutter, otherwise you won't be able to take photos, you'll just snap it and nothing will happen. So enable release without shutter in the custom functions, and you'll be able to take some photos with your manual glass. Also make sure that your Canon EOS M is set to manual mode and not auto. You want full control of the camera and you don't want the camera to dictate what you're doing. So make sure it's in manual and not auto mode. Now the battery life in this camera can be quite poor uh, depending on what lens you use. Electric lenses will drain more battery. Uh, the manual photo lenses without any electronic uh, connections will last a bit longer. But all in all, there are a range of different solutions that you can to overcome the battery loss of the Canon EOS M camera. For example, you can carry around a few batteries if you like. I used to do that, that was my main method. Uh, you can use a power bank through USB-C to a dummy adapter. And then another method is using a battery grip like I have here. Uh, it works fine, power banks work fine, carrying a few batteries work fine. Uh, it just depends on what you guys uh, prefer. Now to install Magic Lantern on the Canon EOS M, you need a good SD card. SanDisk Extreme Pro is what I recommend. I use the 512 gig because I do a lot of shooting uh, from place to place. Uh, if you're not gonna do a lot of shooting, especially with the high resolution modes, then 64 gig, 128 gig will be absolutely fine. Just make sure that you have SanDisk Extreme Pro because these have been really reliable uh, in comparison to all the other ones which don't meet the requirements of shooting RAW on the Canon EOS M. Now to install Magic Lantern on this camera, you need to hop onto the repository, which I've left in the description below, a link. Uh, so hop onto that. Then you need to download the correct file for this camera. So download that file which requires firmware 2.0.2. Once downloaded, extract it and then place the two files and the folder onto a blank SD card. Now if you're a Big Sur OS user, then make sure on your Mac that you format the card as MS-DOS, FAT, and then once you've done that, you can you know, put the files and the folder onto the card. Once the files have been pasted onto the card, then just switch to the camera icon and then update your firmware in camera. All right, so now it's time to delve into the best settings that I use on the Canon EOS M and Magic Lantern RAW. Let's get into it. All right, guys, so here we are. I've got the Canon EOS M, and we're gonna switch over to the movie icon and then turn the camera on. Everything has been reset. Nothing has been touched. This is Magic Lantern straight from the start. First thing you wanna do always is just make sure, you know, everything's working properly from the get-go. So, you know, the audio is working. You got your frame rates over here. You want 24 or 25 frames per second. You want to avoid ideally shooting 30 frames per second otherwise you get drop frames and stuff like that you got your card space on the right here and i've got 453 gig left on the right side here on the bottom right you got your battery level you got your af or mf mode for manual focus you got your kelvin or white balance you got iso your shutter speed and then over here in green this is the mode that you're in 
Currently I'm shooting HD 1080p mode and 14 bit raw. Now a fast way of accessing your Magic Lantern modes is by tapping the screen once and then by selecting the modes from there like HD 1080p, 5k FRTP or the other modes. So that's a quick way of doing it. But for me personally, I don't use these start off presets. So to enter the Magic Lantern menu, you need to hold down the trash can button like this. And then from there, you can pretty much set your presets. You got a whole heap of them. Some of them don't work that well. What I would avoid is the 4K and the 3K. These two I would avoid. I would also avoid the 5K anamorphic and the 5K anamorphic full live view. If you're going to choose one of these two, then I'd go down over here and select the 5K anamorphic FRTP, which stands for full real time preview. This mode has a live view that's as good as the 1080p HD mode. Uh, but this has a two times crop factor like micro four thirds and there's also an absence or you know a reduction of aliasing and moire and stuff like that so this mode is a bit more clean and a bit more free of aliasing but you know the quality is not going to be as good as the hd or the 1080p mode it's going to be just a bit less so that's one thing to take note of so let's start with 1080p and then we'll move from there all right so first off is preset hd 1080p and when you go down to raw video you can see the resolution that's set now this one over here, you got three different ratios. You got 16 by nine, you got 2.35 to one, which has the black bars. All these will be saved in your file. So when you're looking at it on the software, you'll see the black bars of 2.35 or 2.39. These ones will override the aspect ratios that have been set in here. So to access that, you can press the play button or you can just tap into it. And you see that you have aspect ratios over there. If I change to 16 by 9, then this is a 16 by 9 resolution, 1736 by 976. Now if I press ratio and I press 2.35, you can see that it overrided what I set here. Even though it's 16 by 9, it's actually 2.35 to 1. This is like a quick override function, but you can set that to off if you prefer to do it yourself in here. So aspect ratio, I can change to 1.85 to 1 can change to 2.35 to 1 and a whole heap of others you can press set and you can access that in a quick way I prefer to leave that 16 by 9 for now and preview real time or you can have framing what framing does is show you exactly what you've captured in camera it's a bit choppy because you know that's the raw file that's the raw image that you're looking at and unfortunately we don't have a fast FPS for that but that's okay so keep that at real time Kill global draw just removes like zebras and focus peaking and all that stuff if you don't want them. You can enable kill global draw and that will remove like zebras and focus peaking and stuff like that. So record trigger, you can do half press if you want to record that way. Otherwise you can just press the red button here for recording. So you can change to half shutter, start or pause. You can change half shutter hold or pre only. So I'll keep that to off. You can do movie restart. So if you're recording and you know recording stops automatically and you're not aware of it. You can enable movie restart on and then when it stops recording it will automatically just record again so that's called the movie restart and that's extremely helpful for those types of situations so that's pretty much it for this section now if you go down a bit depth you got 10 or 12 bit and if you set to off it equals 14 bit so you know you got 14 bit if you want to leave it off but if you have record drops if your card's not fast enough then i would highly suggest just leaving it at 10 bit this allows you to get more record time in any mode that you use. So 10 bit, you know, would be a preference if your card's not fast enough. I'd personally leave it at 10 bit if you're shooting modes other than 1080p. So if you're shooting 2.5K or 5K FRTP, I'd leave this at 10 bit just to be safe. Set 25 FPS is an override. So if you're shooting 24 frames per second, you just enable sets on that and then you're automatically at 25 frames per second in a quick way. So that's always helpful. You have your white balance and I normally set that to around 5600 Kelvin or 5400 so I'll keep it at 5400 for now. Down over here you have FPS override so you can change your frames per second from 23 to a high FPS. Now one thing to be cautious of is this camera has a buffer that fills up quickly so you don't want to push this camera to its limits you know you can't get 60 frames per second or higher and stuff like that. You want to be a bit cautious you don't want to go over 38 or 48 frames per second with this thing so I don't really play around with this that much really I like to keep it at 24 or 25 frames per second but if you want to play around going higher then that's completely up to you so you can enable that and then you can see that it'll go up to 30 frames per second now this can cause problems in other modes so I'll just tend to leave this off for now 
shutter lock you know if you enable that and then you try to change your shutter over here you'll see that it will just go back to the same shutter because you got shutter lock on which is helpful if you accidentally you know push it over or roll it over so i'll just disable that shutter fine tuning this thing just allows you to adjust your shutter to a bit more of a precise you know shutter speed so you can get 1 48th of a shutter if you play around with this some people like 1 48th I don't really see much of a difference between 148 and 150th, but, you know, I'll keep it there at 148. Now, shutter range allows you to have a more wider range of shutter speed. So, normally, you can't go below 133 of a shutter. And with this enabled in video mode, you can actually go below 133rd of a shutter. So, that's helpful if you want the full range, but I tend to leave it off. Down here, you've got sound recording, and I leave mine to on. And audio delay at 0, 48 kilohertz which is the max you can go with this camera. Now, customize buttons. This one is extremely important when you're starting off because people say they can't change the ISO. Every time they change it, it goes back to ISO 100 and they just kind of change it. So, customize buttons, click set and times three crop toggle. So, if I go back, press the set button, then I'm going to be zooming in times three crop. Press set again and then I'm out back to where I was. So, this is helpful for lenses that vignette like C-mount lenses or other lenses that don't fit the sensor of your camera and extremely helpful for getting tighter shots of birds and wildlife and stuff like that. Now also in customized buttons you got focus aid sticky push so if you're trying to take a photo this thing is going to be annoying and you want to turn that off so you can take a photo without it you know punching in and causing bad frames. Now gain over here if you click that you can change to aperture plus ISO to what I set and this will allow you to change the ISO and the aperture. So if I press up, it's going to change the ISO. You can see it over here changing. And obviously I'm using a manual lens, so there's no aperture control. But if you press down, then that will change the aperture of your lens. As for the drop down list, that's what we saw before. If you tap the screen, then it enters the presets. If you don't want that, you can just set it to off. Now for info selectable, if you press the info button, it will show you your exact framing as we saw before. Now the reason why this is choppy is because it's showing the actual raw frame that we're capturing inside the camera. Now this info button will become extremely helpful later on because we have modes that crop into the live view and they don't show you the actual frame that you're capturing. So you'll have to press info and they'll show you the exact frame instead of the cropped live view that they're showing. So we'll take a look at that later on. So that's it for customized buttons. Down over here have SD overclock. Uh, previously you couldn't record for a long time, especially in high resolution modes and it was always, you know, off. So with this SD overclock, it just, you know, increases the speed of your card and allows you to get more record time uh, for recording. So either 160 or 192 are good. I'll just leave mine at 192 for now. And that's pretty much it for the movie tab, which is extremely essential for good recording. Over here, you have your overlays, you got your zebras, you got your focus peak, magic zoom, all this stuff. So let's set zebras and we'll set that to 100% zebra. Magic Zoom is helpful for getting critical focus, so if you change trigger mode to always on, and then your size, you want the box to be large, and then magnification 3. So if you press menu and get out of it, you can see that a box appears, and if you're using manual focus lenses, this helps you to get critical focus that way. So it's extremely helpful, and it's something that you'd want to do if you're using manual focus lenses. Now Magic Zoom doesn't work well in other modes, so I tend to only use it in the 1080p mode. Histogram will allow you to get good exposure and you want that on. Press the play button and then you want to change scaling to linear. So at the top here you have your histogram and it's showing that my exposure level is 1.9. Now you don't want an exposure level of that because you get lots of noise. You want it to sit around 0.1 which is exposed to the right or you know 1. 1 is fine. If you go above 1 then you'll start seeing noise in the shadow areas. So these are the two that I always have on each and every mode. The false color tool is helpful for exposure as well. You know, it shows you where you have your shadows, the blue areas, and then yellow and red for where your highlights are about to clip or red have clipped. So this is extremely helpful as well, uh, but it's not something that I have on all the time. Then over here in the first tab, you have your exposure. So you've got white balance, ISO, shutter. You can pretty much change anything from here. I've got my neutral picture profile and I set that to sharpness seven. Now this sharpness won't be affected by raw photos or raw video. It will only be affected if you shoot compressed H.26 video. So with raw video, sharpness is not going to affect your image at all. What this does is just help you to get more critical focus because 
the images appear sharper in your live view, so it's like a focus aid a bit. All these other ones you want to avoid, uh, dual ISO, I don't use that anymore. Uh, there's lots of aliasing and it's just, it's not at its full development yet, it's like still in beta mode. So that's it for the exposure tab. Tab 4 and 5, I don't really use much, there's not many settings that appeal to me. This kill Canon graphics element is more important for high resolution, so we'll come back to that. But LV digit peaking is just like an over sharpen for your live view, and again, helps you to obtain critical focus. So I tend to leave that on all the time in any mode that I use. Uh, it's extremely helpful. All these other ones are irrelevant to me. Clear overlays is important if you're going to do live streaming on this camera. You know, I don't do live stream with this thing. I mean, the resolution is blow HD. Uh, but if you want to do it, then clear overlays if you enable that to always. Now you can see that all the graphics, all the elements and display stuff have disappeared. So it's good for live streaming if you don't want to capture anything off your screen. And then you can disable that if you don't want that. Defishing is for fisheye lenses if you want to defish them. Um, anamorphic, if you're using anamorphic adapters, you can stretch them out by 1.25 times, 1.8 or 2 to 1. So if you have an anamorphic adapter, then this will come in handy. So that's pretty much it. That's all you need to shoot 1080p raw. And then you can just get started by clicking the record button. Over here, it's showing a green signal, which means that you're going to get continuous recording for as long as the card fills up or the battery dies out. So, yeah, this indication over here is extremely helpful. So when you're recording, just double check your settings that you're not shooting 30 frames per second or something's off. If your recording stops, just make sure you're shooting 10-bit instead of 14-bit. So these are pretty much the essentials. Alright, so the next preset is 5K FRTP. All you got to do is press set in the third tab, press the up button, and it'll take you down to the one that we want, 5K FRTP. Now once you've set this mode, you want to press the menu button to go to live view, and then hold the trash can again to allow itself to reset. And you can see now that it's changed the resolution to 1360 by 1976. So in this mode, I find that enabling ratio override is extremely important. You want 16 by 9, 2.35 to 1, or 2.39 to 1. So I tend to go with 16 by 9 in this mode, and you'll see how it plays out. Now this mode has around a 2 times crop factor, so that's one thing to consider. And you can see that there are arrows on the side here. This is because this is how Magic Lantern, you know, overcomes the Canon firmware. It's got to crop into the sensor and do a few things. Now you want to go over here, and you want to do up here, kill Canon GUI, and that will get rid of those arrows in any mode that you use where it comes up. So kill GUI is on, and if you go back, you can see that it's now disappeared, and it's all working absolutely fine. This is, again, a 2 times crop factor mode, so, you know, that's one thing to be cautious of. Using wide lenses is absolute key. 16 by 9 1280 by 2160 and it's saying that it's not continuous but we'll go ahead and test that out so click the record button wait for it to load click record and there you go it's giving you a green signal which means that it's getting continuous recording sometimes you might bounce around from orange to yellow to red um, you don't want to be in the red zone that means it's going to stop automatically so now sometimes what might work for the 1080p mode might not work for the other modes. So for example, I've got shutter fine tuning, you know, I might want to disable that, bring that back to zero. And just leave it at 150th of a shutter because sometimes this can cause a few issues um, when recording. So sometimes you want to keep that off. So if we go back to customize buttons, you can see that gain has been set to aperture plus ISO. Again, changing aperture is by pressing down, ISO by pressing up. Info selectable. Now if I want to see my actual framing, just to double check, press info button and this is what I'm recording. So you can see that it matches very clearly. So it's just a bit slight of a difference. So that's it for 5k FRTP mode. You want ratio on for this mode, it's very important. And you can select one of these three. Alright, so now it's time for my favorite modes, which are the high resolutions. And you know, these ones over here are 2.5k centered at HDMI or FRTP. You want to avoid these ones. The one that I use is this one over here, 2.5K, 2520 to 1418. So press set, press the menu button, and then it will launch that mode. So now you can see how cropped that is. If you press the info button, it will show the exact framing. And this is what you're getting. Now you're probably thinking, you know, how am I supposed to record with this type of framing? So what I do is just hit the record button like this, and then I press the info button to check the framing. So as I'm panning, I'm moving slowly, slowly, slowly. And then I just stop the recording because I don't want to record for that long. With the 2.5K mode, it's not continuous recording. So that's one thing to 
you know, keep in mind. Now, if we check out the resolution over here, you can see that I have overrided the aspect ratio to 16 by 9, and this gives you a resolution of 2192. You can get higher than this, but over here you see that you can't, and that's because you've overridden the ratio. So if you set that to off, you can adjust it further, 2.5K. This won't give you continuous recording, unfortunately, so it'll stop in about, you know, five seconds or less. Sometimes you can get more. Uh, we'll see how we go with that. All right, so I'm getting more. Yeah, so about 10 seconds of 2.5K raw. So if you want to get more record time about continuous, then just override your aspect ratio over here to 16 by 9, 2.35 to 1, or 2.39 to 1. Now for high resolution modes, which take a lot of power, you want to make sure that your bit depth is set to 10 bit. You don't want 14 bit or 12 bit, otherwise this thing will stop automatically. When you see 10 bit, just think of it as more record time. Uh, there's no difference between 10 bit, 12 bit, and 14 bit. They all look the same to me when I've graded them in post. So again, all these white balance and stuff, the shutter speed, they're all kept the same, even the zebras. This is pretty much the important mode for every time you change different uh, modes or presets. So if I want to get good amounts of record time in the high resolution modes, then I'll always override my aspect ratio to 16 by 9 or 2.35 to 1. If you want to get the most resolution but record for not too long, then just, you know, disable that and then change the aspect ratios from there. So 16 by 9, 2.5K raw won't get you much record time. You can also reduce the resolution from there if you like, if you want to get more record time, uh, but I tend to leave it at 2.5K. And that's it for the 2.5K. Next is the 2.8K raw mode. Now, you want to go down here and it says 2.8K, so click that. And then you can see that it hasn't changed yet. That's because you have to just refresh this screen for it to load. Press info, just to double check. Now, in this mode, you're limited to 2.35 to 1. It's what this camera can handle. You know, you can't handle 2.8K, 16 by 9. Now, when you enter this mode, you can see that resolution has been left off from where we were with 2.5K. So press the play button and then just rotate it all the way to 2.8K raw. And you can see that even though we've set 16 by 9, it's still 2.35 to 1, which is the max aspect ratio we can get with this. Even if I override to 16 by 9, you still won't be able to get 16 by 9. So it's maximum of 2.35 to 1 or less in this mode. What I also like is that you can do 2 to 1. So if you just, you know, rotate the wheel back, you can achieve over here 2 to 1. And this will give you a resolution of 2432 by 1190. So for now, I'm going to keep it at 2 to 1, which is the aspect ratio that I really like. Bit depth, again, you want it at 10 bit. You don't want it at 12 bit or 14 bit, otherwise it will stop recording. And then all these settings, again, are all the same as the previous ones. So we can go back to menu, press the info button, and this is what we're getting with our framing. So when I'm focusing, I'm focusing in the real live view over here. And then when I want to check my framing, I press the info button. And then I actually record with the framing on. So I'll show you in a sec. So I'll you know, focus on my subject, make sure I quiet focus. And then when I'm ready to pan my shot, I start from the left, press the info button, and then record. And once it records, then I move to the right of my recording like this. And then it should stop automatically because it's not continuous. Now when you play back your clips, they're going to be choppy because they're going frame by frame. As you can see over here, these are the maximum frames. And if you press all, it will skip through the frames a bit more quickly. So again, to focus on my subject, I just leave it at the normal live view, which is nice and quick. And then when I'm recording, I press the info button for the framing. Now during recording, you can press the info button again while it's recording, just to double check your focus. And then press, you know, the framing mode again. So you can interchange between these two while you're recording, which is extremely helpful. And stop recording. Now this camera is not very good with monitors, it draws a lot of power and you get lots of corruption, lots of dropped frames, so I'd avoid using monitors with this thing. However, I do have a solution coming up in the next video, so stay tuned for that. But that's pretty much all my settings with this camera. You know, 2.5K and 2.8K are mostly what I shoot with this thing. And the 1080 modes, you know, well, it's good for beginners or people who like to shoot with the full uh, one6 times crop on this camera. The 5K FITP is good for two times crop if you want extra reach or if you want to avoid aliasing but 2.5k and 2.8k is where I feel comfortable uh, with this camera so yeah hopefully this was an easy tutorial something that was easy to grasp for you guys so that's pretty much it that's all my settings I use on the Canon M to shoot raw video 
Hopefully you guys got something out of it. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.